front, my dad was black My father big suits really made out of sack I was born with a plastic spoon in my mouth Got it. Hello everybody, welcome to the Matthew Street channel. I am your host, Matthew Street. And as you know, I have a Beatles power pop and music YouTube channel, which I've had for several years now. And I don't get to do something this special that often, folks. Usually it's just me yakking into the camera and telling you about stuff I love. But today I have a very special interview for you and I'm excited about this. Now back, let me give you some background, folks. Back in 2021, I was turned on to an eight song mini LP called Rotation by a band called the Airport 77s. And there it is my CD back there. Now, folks, as you know, as a power pop fanatic, I was immediately drawn to the hooks, the beats, the melodies, and the energy of this band. I mean, I fell in love with them. I just became infatuated with this little mini LP back here. Great stuff. You're talking classic 70s and 80s power pop and new wave but with a solid modern today sound. And I loved it so much. So what I did is I did some background folks. I discovered they were based out of Silver Spring, Maryland, and they consisted of three members, Andy Sullivan on guitar and vocals, Chuck Dolan on bass and vocals, and John Kelly on drums. And I learned that on the strength of this little mini LP rotation, that they had been signed to Marty Scott's Gem Records. And you know how I feel about Gem Records, folks. I've talked about them in many of my videos. I love many of the artists on the label, like the Weaklings, the Gripweeds, the Midnight Callers, one of my favorite labels on the planet right now. So to hear that the Airport 77s were on Gem Records, that was very, very excited to me. Then I find out that they're preparing to release their label debut on Gem Records coming up on September 30th this year. So it's going to be either out right now as you watch this, or it's out within days when I post this first. And here it is, folks. Wow. We realize you have a choice. The debut album on Gem Records by the Airport 77s. And folks... I am very honored to have a member of this band on my channel and talk to him about the brand new album and some of his background in music. So let me say, welcome, welcome to the Matthew Street channel, Andy Sullivan from the Airport 77s. Andy, how are you doing and welcome? Right on, right on. I'm doing great. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, appreciate you having me on and saying all those nice things about our band. Oh, I'm happy to do so. So, um, and congratulations on being with Gem Records. I mean, that that must have been exciting to to sign on the dotted line there and get that a record deal going. That that's just fantastic. I can't even imagine how exciting you guys must have felt. It is. I, I'll always remember this moment. We had just uh, gotten off the phone with Marty. I was on assignment. I'm a reporter, and uh, I had traveled to. Uh, Miami when that condo collapsed and I was covering that right, story right. and that was a really tough story real real tragedy um so I spent the day walking around in the heat talking to really sad people and uh then I got on the phone with Marty and the other band members and we talked and we said all right looks like this is going to work wow so then I went and jumped in the ocean in Miami Beach and I'm <laughs> swimming around in the ocean and I'm looking back and I'm like hey man I'm on Gem Records this is pretty great that's pretty darn cool yeah absolutely and as I said, I, I love the new albums. It's right up my alley. And we're going to really dive into that and get into it heavily in a moment here. But first, I have to say, you guys are technically coming off what is your first official release on Gem Records. And that was the Airport 77s, which I think stellar contribution to the recent Gem Records celebrates Pete Townsend right here. Um, fantastic. It came out August 5th. And you guys have a great track on there called Substifool. Can you tell my viewers a little bit about that track and how it came to be? So it's a mashup of two Who songs, Substitute and Won't Get Fooled Again. Uh, how it came to be was that I had bought a couple guitar synthesizer pedals and I was fooling around with them and I really wanted to sort of see what they could do. Um, and so we figured out what Who songs we liked, what ones would work with our style and uh, sort of took it from there. So the song has a lot of the sort of sonic signatures of Won't Get Fooled Again, those sort of pulsing synthesizers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, 
And then it's got a spacey breakdown in the middle that I think sort of reminds me of a Styx's Come Sail Away. Um, so <laughs> totally over the top. Yeah. Uh, and Chuck Dole and the bass player, really, it's, it's a showcase of his chops. Um, the bass is really up front. It's really prominent. He plays the crap out of it. Um, and John uh, Kelly, our drummer, also has some monster fills. Uh, my initial thought had been like, I wanted to do it super robot style to make it not sound like the Who at all. But gotcha. when you're in a power trio and you're going to be outvoted because the bassist and drummer are going to say, no, we want to do it the way the Who did it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it's just a great track. It's one of my favorites on that compilation. And uh, so congratulations on that. But um, before we get into uh, We Realize You Have a Choice, I want to go back a little bit in time with you. Uh, share with me and my viewers, how did you get interested in music, Andy? I mean, were you raised in a musical family? Did you have music lessons? I was. I was raised uh, in a musical family up in Maine. Uh, my parents were dedicated classical musicians. They've been singing choral music their whole life. Mm -hmm. um, so I grew up listening to a lot of choral music, singing in a boys' choir, um, and really discovering a passion for it that way. I remember when I was a kid, I wasn't that great at sports. I was okay in school. Um, but when I opened my mouth to sing, it was just like something I could do naturally. And, you know, really, it was, it was like a gift. It was really something. I right. had a voice like a laser beam. Uh, then my voice changed and I had to learn how to sing all over again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh can you share some of your musical influences during those days? Who was who were you really into back then that got you? Yeah, I didn't really listen to much pop music as a kid. Um, I know you're a huge Beatles fan. My parents yeah, had a few yeah. Beatles <laughs> records, and I certainly like absorbed them into my bloodstream. Right, um, right. But I didn't really tune into what was happening on the radio until I was about 12 or 11 or 10. Uh, and that was the sort of the height of the new wave era. Um, mm -hmm. So you had the cars. You had Blondie, you had the police, um, men at work, bands like that. So that's right, when right. I was really sort of starting to soak that stuff up. And that's when I started to teach myself guitar as well. Right. Um, so those were sort of, I guess, musically the formative years. And then I went on did, to, you know. Did you play in bands as a kid? Did you, at some yeah, point, the, yeah. I started putting rock bands together when I was about 14 or 15. And I found like it was a great way to get girls to talk to me. Um <laughs> So I've been doing it ever since, not yeah. just for that reason. Yeah. I mean, around this time, I mean, when did you meet John and Chuck? How did the Airport 77s come together? I knew them from playing in bands around town. Um, they had played in a band that uh, it was sort of a monkeys tribute band. Ah. And uh, I had sort of a hard rock thing that was doing a uh, rock opera about the corrupt lobbyist Jack Abramoff, which... For some reason, most of the world did not understand. <laughs> right, right. Um, but they reached out to me. They needed a guitar player. And uh, we got together to just jam. And imme immediately we hit it off. Like, we just knew that the three of us had a connection. Um, I really like how, I mean, they're both just great musicians. John is a very musical drummer. He's a really good listener. Um, mm -hmm. He's not just a basher. And Chuck is a really talented, creative bass player and an excellent singer too so you know the great thing about this band is we have two really good lead singers that's awesome now moving forward a little bit you guys eventually uh back at the start of 2021 you released rotation uh which i love it has a really new wave punkish power pop vibe but it still retains that modern edge to it i mean what were your thoughts when rotations received such positive reviews and accolades i was looking around doing some research and a lot of like uh, power pop vlogs and and uh, sites and that they really gave rotations high high praise. I mean, was that uh, something you guys expected, or were you you know caught off guard by it? We had no idea. Um, right. I when I was in the 1990s, I was in a rock band on a small label, and I toured and did all that. But oh, okay. Since then, basically, you know, we've been doing it for fun, uh, and we had been gigging a lot. Uh, and the, during when the pandemic hit, we were sort of sidelined, and that gave us a chance to sort of work up this material and go right. in the studio. And, yeah, we didn't really have any expectations about how it would be received. Like, we just sort of poked around and said, let's, you know, these people seem to write about this kind of music that we mm. like, that we sound like. And so, yeah, it was wonderful. It was, it was a real treat. 
Yeah, everyone, um, everyone seemed to love it. Yeah, yeah, it was it was really surprising. And again, you remember how isolating that those times were. Is the dead? You know, it was yeah. January twenty twenty one. So the first COVID winter, um, no vaccines yet. Everybody's still. So you guys down. were recording all separately in separate locations. The three of no, you. No, we went into oh, okay. a studio. We went to the sort of legendary punk rock studio in DC. Um, oh, okay. In our ear. Um, and I think we recorded in the fall, which at that point, like, uh, there was fewer worries about the vaccine. So we wore masks. Um, and then it ramped up again and everybody had to isolate. But, right, uh, right. Yeah, so we, we had a little little respite there. So, so yeah, that was, that was a real thrill. Yeah, no, it, it's a great little mini album or EP. I don't know what to officially call it, a mini album or an EP, but it's fantastic. Yeah. I love all eight songs. And I love the cover of Girl of My Dreams on it. I mean, when I was a, a an older teenager, that was like one of my favorite kind of underground power pop songs mm -hmm. by Bram Tchaikovsky. Uh, you know, it was like, yeah. he, you know, I think it was like his only really top 40 hit here in America. Right. But wow, you guys made a great choice with that one. That was a fantastic cover. Thank um, you. That was the sort of material that we initially bonded over was, was um, obscure power pop nuggets from that era. I was going to say, Ch John and Chuck, have a similar love or interest in that type of music as you do they uh yeah they do. and frankly they introduced me to a lot of it you know i yeah. knew i knew the big hits i knew cheap trick but you know the paul collins beat stuff like that that was right, right. all them so <laughs> that was great yeah so with we realize you have a choice and again i want to i want to show it nice and close for everybody there it is folks it's out either in a few days or it's out right now. It's available everywhere, everywhere you can get this, folks. So go to your favorite outlet and pick it up. It's beautiful. And I'm going to talk about this cool packaging in a minute. That's part of my, uh, I said, I got to talk about it because I, I just love the imagery on this package. But um, it's your first full-length album for Gem Records. How did you become involved with Marty? I know you said you were on an, an assignment, a news assignment, and you know, you would speak with Marty and the band and things came through, but what was the impetus? Like, when did you first meet or talk to Marty Scott or did he reach out to you? It was um, summer 2021. Um, we put out rotation. We saw there's a few labels working in this space, uh, Jem being, you know, one of them. And uh, we reached out to Marty and, you know, we talked and it seemed like it made sense to work together. And uh, the cool thing about working with Marty is he has great ears. You know, he will listen to a mix of a song and say, okay, the chorus needs to pop more. The snare needs to be up. These vocals are a little uh, sandpapery. Let's smooth them out. Let's, you know, lop off the last half of the chorus. Right. And he's not like a technical musician. He's not saying, you know, make that an A flat or anything or, you know, bump the compressor up for DBs. Um, but he does have a real sense of how a good tight pop song should go. Right, right. Well, it definitely retains all the great elements of rotations, but I think it also takes a big step forward with different themes, uh, different influences on you guys, in my opinion, and your humorous and quirky lyrics are always a big part of your music. I mean, whether it's rotations or the brand new album, but could you share with us, I mean, some of the, if, if you feel there were any, any changes or growth within the band made between rotations and we realize you have a choice like writing style themes or. Yeah, I think rotation is definitely a, a sort of singular focus. Like the songs were all recorded at once. They all have a similar sound, a similar feel. Um, and with uh, we realize you have a choice, we're branching out a bit more. Um, I'm exploring more sounds because I got these synthesizer pedals. So there's little frilly bits sort of floating around in a lot of the songs. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also I feel like, like we have played enough from this firm foundation that we can, you know, branch out and do a little hair metal or, you know, do yeah. sort of more of a jazzy feel and that it doesn't sound like we're just taking a, you know, touristic trip through the genres. Um, because the songs all have that Airport 77's core. Absolutely. Do you, do you write all the material, Andy, or do, does Chuck or John contribute? How does it work with the songwriting? It's, uh, generally, I, I start off the songs, and um, we'll present them to them, and then we'll kick them around, sharpen the lyrics, work on the arrangements, that sort of thing. 
Okay, I got to get into some songs because I, I I just love all the tracks on this album. And believe it or not, I did get one question from one of my viewers. Uh, I didn't like put it out there to everybody and say, send me questions. But a viewer who I'm very close to, I let him know I was going to be inter uh, interviewing Andy from the Airport 77s and he loves the band. And uh, the viewer is David P. from Dubuque, Iowa. And he asked a good question, I think. Uh, he said he enjoys the tongue-in-cheek humor in your songs. And he says the lyrics are really relatable and funny. What he wants to know is, do you try to write from personal experience, Andy, or do you take a more imaginative approach to your songwriting? I'm definitely writing characters. Um, you know, personal experience, I'm a happily married suburban dad. Um, <laughs> so, which is great in your yeah. personal life. But like, uh, you know, if you want a little drama or a little tension, you have to sort of, uh think of things and and sort of cook up scenarios right, um right. so on rotation you know the song uh when you're kissing on me do you think of james mcavoy yeah <laughs> but a guy yeah. his girlfriend is the hots for a movie star and uh it, it makes him all jealous and unnerved and he goes into this imaginary scenario where you know his girlfriend's on a date with james mcavoy and she's just <laughs> doing whatever you know she's betraying her entire personality in order to please James McAvoy, eating food, drinking wine that she wouldn't normally, that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's, you know, the, that's a specific scenario, but it taps into sort of emotions that we all can feel. We've all felt jealous and insecure. And clearly this character is going way over the top and that's what makes it funny. But, you know, hopefully everybody can identify with the fact that, you know, sometimes right. it, you know yeah. Okay. Now that being said, he wants to know in the, uh, song which was the first single back about eight to nine months ago losers win he said wait right here for just a minute and a minute turned to 17 years he said babe i swear i won't be gone for long wants to know this is his follow-up did the lyric about stepping in the kitty litter actually happen <laughs> <laughs> no that was a rhyme you know like often you'll you'll be working on a song and you'll get an idea and you're like yeah. uh okay how do what rhymes with this how does this fit together and certainly when i write songs i think a lot about how the words sound it's mm -hmm. almost always like you come up with an idea you know a, a lyrical hook um losers win for example and sort of work backwards from there and you have the music right. and then you got to come up with like you know the vowels and consonants that fit in there and so that's often just a matter of writing a ton of words and throwing out most of them and then you, you end up with like you know uh he's stepping in the kitty litter box i think i had the line <laughs> uh he's hung up on the babysitter what rhymes with yeah, that yeah, yeah stepping in the kitty litter box <laughs> yeah and then the following line rhymes, he got it in his socks. So you're shifting the rhyme scheme around. <laughs> yeah, it was it's just so cool. Yeah. Piling on the images there. Yeah, so, yeah. Thanks, yeah. David. That's a really yeah, nice yeah, there, he, yeah, I was really happy when he uh, contributed that question. I, I it's gotta I got to say, it. Matthew, it's really thrilling when, you know, you come up with this stuff and, you know, you play it a few times and then you release it into the world and there's people out there who like listen and listen closely and you know and they, not and they pick up on those little nuances and things yeah i i, I think it's great yeah, yeah it's a treat 
how, how do you decide, uh, Andy, who's going to sing each track? I know Chuck also sings. Um, how do you yep. guys make that decision? We have very complimentary voices. We both have sort of clear musical voices. Neither of us is particularly raspy. Um, I'm a tenor. He's a baritone. So that right. often factors into it, what key the song is in. Um, but, you know, he can do a killer falsetto. Um, generally, if it's in a lower register, he'll sing it. Um, he has sort of a cool, like, righteous Old Testament style of singing. Right, right. Um, so, like, on rotation, the song Shannon Speaks is Chuck singing, and it's really sort of foreboding and spooky and righteous. Uh, and on this new record, uh, there's a song called Somebody's, which he sings beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, my, that, you know, I can cool, do other... Sorry? It's got a cool jazzy break, Somebody's. I like that little break in the yeah, middle the, of the, the fake yeah. Santana thing. Yeah. And whereas my voice, I can I can be a little smarmier. I can be a little more intimate. I can be I don't know. You know, it's it's like they're similar, but they have different strengths. Um, right, right. So it's a song like "Birthday Girl," which is a little bit campy and a little bit hair metal, mm -hmm. um, is one I sing, um, just because I can ham it up a little bit. Hopefully, right. not too much. Oh, very cool. Um, I just wanted to get into some of the production of the album, like the band along with Paul Tewksbury and Don Ziantara, I think I'm pronouncing that right, Ziantara, yeah. re recorded We Realize You Have a Choice, and uh, Kurt Ryle mixed it at the House of Vibes studio in New Jersey. Did the band self-produce the album more or less? Or Yes. That yeah, work? I mean, we came up with the arrangements, and uh, we recorded the basics in the studios, you know, the drums and stuff. Um and we did most of the overdubs in my basement or Chuck's basement. You know, I mean, digital technology, what it is these days, you get a good microphone, right. you know, you, you, you make sure there's not uh, bad echoes or anything, and then you can do it yourself. And the nice thing about that is, you know, I could really spend a lot of time dialing in the right guitar tone, or we could really do like 20 passes on the vocal and make sure that the final vocal was really strong. Nice. Okay. Now I got to ask you about this because I have to mention some of the people who were involved in the creation of this excellent cover design. If I get it in the right spot here, we have Jim saw is it, am I pronouncing that right? Andy, Jim yep. saw took the legendary, photos. Legendary DC punk rock photo. Oh, cool. And we have Ross Brandt did the design. Uh, can you tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about the creation of the cover as I show it? Um, John is, he does most of our visual stuff. He's got a very good sense of style and he's worked with Ross. Um, and so they sort of kicked that back and forth. We had a concept we wanted and it was just sort of an iterative process where, you know, we told Ross and he gave us the thing. We said, no, that's not good. Fix this, fix that. Right. Um, but we eventually got there. You know, if you could take off the CD yeah, yeah, that's what I I wanted to ask you about. That. This was Chuck's idea. Give me, give me some of the background on this. It's it's um so you remember that the famous uh, upside down Jenny stamp? It's like one of the most valuable stamps. In the yeah, stamp yeah, it's, it's, like it's worth plane. like yeah, it's worth a fortune. Yeah, yeah, right. And so Chuck flipped it around and put a you know a modern seven forty seven or whatever modern Very cool. modern air jetliner in there. Very nice. <laughs> Very cool. Okay. Oh, man. But I mean, it's just a fun rocking album to me all around. I, I love all the tracks. There's just like such diversity in the sounds. And, you know, to create something this special, you're giving, like I said, folks, the guys are giving a nod to 70s and early 80s power pop, new wave. There's some punk in here. There's a little metal in here. There's just so much cool stuff here. Yet, as I said earlier, it still retains the modern, fresh and relevant feeling to it which i think is so cool now i have to ask you about the brand new single in video <laughs> one good thing about summer which is catchy as hell i love it as the kickoff lead track Thanks. on the album um tell us a little bit about that song i mean it grabbed me on first listen it sets the tone and we're off to the races the video is so much fun i, I encourage all of you out there check out the airport 77's one good thing about summer video it's so much fun <laughs> There's only one good thing about summer One good thing about summer And it's you I hate the beach, I hate the sand, I hate the heat I can't stand those summer jams Trying to get you in a summer mood
Andy, tell us a little bit about the track and the video, which I, lo I love some of the scenery in the video. So the song came up, I, I came up with that initial phrase, there's one good thing about summer and it's you. And again, this is a character like we we're talking earlier. This is like a, a grumpy dude. This is a guy who like wears jeans to the pool, you know, <laughs> wears black socks on the beach, that sort of thing. Um, so it's a grumpy song, but then it's really a love song because right. then he's talking about all these lovely things he did with his special somebody. Um, we needed a song to open our set. Like we we didn't have that. And my initial thought was sort of a Led Zeppelin song remains the same with a long instrumental fanfare at the beginning. And so we started kicking it around and we tightened the fanfare and tightened it further. And then when Marty heard it, he wanted it tightened further, which turned out to be a good idea. Um, and so the challenge with recording it was just getting a real steady performance, getting it really locked in. We eventually got there and then I was able to use my guitar synthesizers to have the floaty bits on top. Like I really had this idea. I wanted the song when you're listening it to be like you're you're swimming in a lake at night and you're looking up at the stars. You know, mm -hmm. that feeling mm -hmm. that you only get once a summer if you're lucky. Exactly. And I yeah. think we captured that. And a lot of that was Kurt's mixing. You know, he really was able to sort of bring out all those bits. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, the video right was a, largely, it was a lot of John's idea. Um, ah. Like I said, he is a lot of the visual ideas in the band. And it was shot on an iPhone uh, by my colleague. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The other videos we've done with, with other equipment, but um, uh, my colleague, Kevin Fogarty, he's a professional video cameraman. And he just yeah. came over and over the course of an evening, we just shot it and rode bikes around and fooled around in John's backyard. Yeah, it looks um, great. And it sort of falls into the, our philosophy, which is, you know, obviously we work hard on writing good material and music that has artistic merit, but we really want people to enjoy themselves. You know, when they're coming to an Airport 77 show, like, we want them to dance. Um, right. We don't want them to stand there like this. Yeah. And when you're watching the video, we want you to enjoy yourself and chuckle and if the risk of that is we look slightly ridiculous, you know, so what? Yeah, so what? <laughs> we're totally okay with that. Like, yeah. You know, I would much rather err on the side of of yeah. being too silly than than otherwise. No, you, you, did, you did a great job on the video. It's so attention grabbing. It's fun. It makes you smile. It's just one of those videos that's just you got to see it, folks. Please check it out. You're gonna love it. Um, there's, there's so many great songs on the album. Uh, a couple others I really want to highlight, though, with you. The first single, which was done several months ago, was Losers Win. And wow, that, it's such a good rocker. It's got the fun lyrics, as we spoke about earlier a little bit. I mean, that that was a great first off single. When you were recording that song, did you know it was going to be on this brand new album? Uh, we realized you No, it was all or? sort of, we thought, we thought maybe we were going to record a few more songs and turn rotation into a full-length thing and release that. Um, but by the time we got around to working with Marty, we sort of felt like rotation was a bit old and we figured we might as well just like put our heads down and come up with the material for a new album. Oh, so it was okay. a bit of a sprint uh, from fall to spring of this year. Right, right. Uh, another song I really have to mention is All Torn Up Over Tina. Now I'm sure you're aware or maybe you're not, but it's getting a lot of airplay on Little Steven's Coolest Song Station on Sirius XM. Channel 721. Oh, nice. Yeah, I did some uh, looking up, looking it up. It, it's been played over this past week, like eight or nine times. Oh, cool. Now, I know it's not a single, so I, I didn't know if you knew anything about this and why All Torn Up Over Tina is getting so many uh, hits on, on Little Steven's station there. <laughs> so Bill Kelly's show on Saturday nights, he, he played us um, last year a lot, which was great. And okay. uh, so I think Marty sent him this record. And I'll turn up over Tina. Yeah, it's it's there's like 12 songs in the record. It's probably like number nine or ten. Yeah. Um, so he listened all the way through, and that's the one he liked. We were like, you know, our single yeah. is one good thing about summer. And he said, Well, this is the one I like. And so sure. Yeah. Yeah. I that think that's the, the way they do it over there. They pick the one they want to play. <laughs> yeah. Despite everything and that's, else. That's great. But that yeah, is, no, I yeah, I looked it up just earlier before we came on together. And yeah, it's it's been played on uh, channel 721 about eight or nine times this week. And also it's gotten a couple of hits on his regular underground garage channel on channel 21. Mm -hmm. So cool. um, 
Who knows? <laughs> it That's seems great. to be getting some uh, legs behind it. That, but that that is the one song that I was not involved in the writing of. John wrote that with his friend J.P. McDermott. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that one's been kicking around for quite a while. But yeah, it's it's a fun song. All right, and I have to give special mention to one of my favorites on the album. Um, it's I, in terms of vinyl terms, I would consider it maybe the flip side of Losers Win, which is. Again, this is one of my favorites on the album, along with Losers Win, but the illustrated book of Cupid. Oh, cool. I absolutely love that track. It's just got such a cool, funky groove or vibe to yeah. it. It just grabs you and it holds on to you. And I I can't get it out of my head. You know what I mean? I Well, I cool. can't get the whole album out of my head, but that particular song, it's just always right there. How did that song come together? And tell me a little bit more about uh, Cupid. I had written that song a few years earlier and it was just sort of sitting around. Uh, but then we started playing it and when, especially when we started recording it, we really, really sat on that groove. And if you listen mm. to the recordings, the, the bass is up so high. It's like, it's almost like Led Zeppelin two levels. Um, yeah, yeah. And so John, um, Chuck is really filling a lot of space with his bass. I'm, I'm playing way back. We've got the cowbell going and just sort of a fat chubby, super laid back group. And then the, the falsetto vocals too. So you've got this yeah, yeah. real space. You've got the high vocals, the super fat bass, not much in the middle. And then I played too many notes in the guitar solo, you know, just, yeah. to, I got to get my licks in. <laughs> no, it's, it's just a fabulous track. Um, this, I mean, there's so many good ones on the album. If, if there's any particulars you want to highlight, I mean, the way she moves is a scorcher. You got mm -hmm. that punkish vibe to it. You got uh, Chuck, I assume doing like a bass solo in there. Or yes. Some, yeah. Yep. Bass soloing, it's yep. fabulous. Somebody's we mentioned earlier, it's got that smooth power pop with the little jazzy Santana type break you mentioned earlier. Uh, I, I almost think of that one sort of almost like I'm not the world's biggest Journey fan, but yeah. that does seem a little Journey esque in that it's really uh, sort of big and ambitious, and right. you know, you sort of feel like pumping your fist at the heavens. On yeah, it, it's just such a real diverse song, it's got so much going on in it uh bad together is a cool rocker but it's got that nice little keyboard lick in it who does yeah. the keyboard lick in there is that you or those are all guitars oh those um, are guitars yeah okay so that was i was again just experimenting with different sounds because you know when you're in a trio yeah, yeah. you gotta try different things uh, uh, maybe, um, yeah maybe my ears are off but i said wow that little keyboard lick is cool <laughs> but guitars okay well it's just it's i mean you know, a synthesizer can be triggered by anything. And so this yeah, is, I'm yeah. using my guitar as the controller rather than a keyboard. Nice. Uh, again, we mentioned All Torn Up Over Tina. I I mean, that's such fast new wave. That that should be a hit. I, I love it. <laughs> I'm hoping now that it's getting some play on Underground Garage, maybe it's going to skyrocket somewhere. Because that's like, uh, that's a hit. That's a hit record. Like so many cool. on this album are. Uh, I love it. Um, all Alone Together uh bright pop tunes got the fabulous guitar solo by you i assume mm -hmm. i love i love your tone your guitar tone on Thank alone you. together uh was that something you you consciously yeah put together I mean, like, or with just... all this stuff i just sort of sat in the basement and tried various combinations of guitars and amps and pedals and tweaking knobs and so for right. that solo i used an equalizer pedal to really emphasize the upper mid range so that it has this sort of honking sound that would sound ugly on its own, but when you have the other stuff in there, it sort of fits in nicely. Mm -hmm. And again, that was the real, you know, treat of being able to record so much of this at home and that there wasn't that pressure where you're in the studio and you're like, oh my God, this is 60 bucks an hour. I got to right, do it right. now. Right. Um, you could take the time to labor over it a little bit. You know? Yeah. We spoke earlier about influences and that song is really influenced by somebody I listened to very closely uh, when I was in my early 20s, and that's a Minneapolis artist named Willie Wisely, um, okay. who has, at the time, was doing a sort of uh, jazz punk thing, um, and I, I studied him really closely and sort of ripped off everything that I could from him. Um, <laughs> yeah. Willie's gone on to have a, you know, put out a lot of records and uh, sort of, he's explored various styles, uh, but this is sort of hearkening back to his earlier incarnation. Right. Well, I, I mean, this thing, it's just so impressive, Andy. I mean, I'm not just blowing smoke here. I, I'm a power pop guy. I've been a power pop guy since I was a young teenager or preteen. And this just 
hit me right off the bat. It's just, it's that nonstop music I've loved since I was younger. But as I say, and I like to go back to, it's not just retro folks. This is today music. This is now happening rock and roll. Uh, but it just, it just gives such a nice salute and a nod back to that music that I love so much as a young person, as a teenager. And it's just absolutely wonderful. It's out everywhere. September 30th, folks. So it's either out right now everywhere or within days, it's going to be out there. Um, Andy, any other news we should be aware of with the Airport 77s or how can people find out more about the band and maybe learn well, you more know, about you guys? We're on the internet. Um, we've got uh, a website and, you know, usual social media stuff. Yeah. Um, we are playing a bunch around DC in the fall and we are playing uh, in Queens at the um, International Pop Overthrow on November 13th. So if you're in oh, the are you uh, are you there for Gem Records night? I heard there's we are. A oh, okay. Uh, well, yeah. I'm, I might get to meet you in person, Andy, that night. I'm going to be yeah, down that'd there. Be great. For, I am coming down for that. I couldn't cool. miss that. I cannot miss that. So uh, you're in, yeah, you're in Boston. Is that right? I'm in. I'm between Boston and Providence. Yep. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. So I will be down there then. So that'll be great to finally meet you in person. But um, Andy, I, I can't thank you enough for taking the time during a weekday like this to do this with me. And I wish you, Chuck and John, so much luck. Best of everything and success with the brand new album. It's absolutely wonderful. Folks, all my viewers, anybody watching this or listening to this, please go out and get. We realize you have a choice by the Airport 77s. You're going to thank me. You're going to absolutely love it. It's one of the finest rock and roll albums to come out in a long time for me because... I'm very picky about my power pop and rock and roll, and I love this. So cool. I guarantee you, folks, you won't be disappointed. Andy, anything else you have? If, if not, I just want to say thank you so much. I appreciate this from the bottom of my heart. It means a lot to me. Well, my pleasure, and thank you. Like, what a nice interview. What great questions. And I, I really appreciate you listening and uh, telling the world about it. All right. Thanks so much, Andy, and I hope I see you very soon and meet you in person. Looking forward to it. Take care.